Today, I'm going to share a free app that helps you figure out what to do with a painting when you're not sure what to do. So let's get started. All right, here's the photograph that I originally wanted, well, that I did work from. I just happened to walk by the table and I saw this holiday mashup of the Hanukkah menorah and the Christmas tree and a jigsaw puzzle going. And I thought, wow, that, I, there are just a lot of shapes and things that I really liked. And I thought, well, I'm going to work on that just bit by bit. So this is as, about as far as I got. And I posted this. And then the next morning I woke up and I walked in the studio and I immediately thought, I don't like it. All right, this video is about an app that I just found out about. It's probably been around forever. I don't ever hear about anything when, when it's brand new, but it is free. I love free. Um, and I'm going to show you how um, I used it because I didn't know what to do with this painting. So um, I'm using an iPad in this case, and the app is called Mark Up. Um, M-A-R-K-U-P, and I'll, I'll probably put a title right there. So what you do first is you select a photo. So I'm selecting a photo from my photos. And here it is. This is the picture. Whoops. Yeah, get rid of that. This is the picture that I was not too crazy about. I mean, I, I liked it when I first did it, as usual, I liked it. And then when I came in the next morning, I thought, oh boy, it just doesn't tie together. What do I do? What do I do? So it was suggested to me that I try this app. So you can, it will pull from your photos. And then the next thing I do is I pick a color and I wanted to see what would happen if I put a darker background in. So I picked blue. There's very limited colors. I know there are other apps that will let you really dial in and pick the color you want. That's not what this is um, because it's really rudimentary. And I really wanted to know more than anything. Um, I'm looking for value. I'm gonna decide on color later. I, I can decide that myself. I picked a thick paintbrush in this case, and that's gonna allow my finger to uh, put in the blue color that I dialed in. So let's see what happens here. You can start to fill it in. Hope you can see that. So as I fill it in, remember, this is not the color I'm going to use, but I knew that I wanted to see what would it look like with a darker background. My other choice was a brown, which was about the same value. I knew I didn't want to use that. And the choice beyond that was uh, black. And I tried black and that was too dark. So it let me know that this was probably the right value that I wanted. So there we go. Whoops. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there, that allowed me to see what would that look like if I pulled it together with that value background. Now, to get out of it, you can just undo it. So I'll clear it and undo it and cancel what I just did. Undo, 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 clear, okay. And then it goes back to the original. And now I'll show you what happens if I put in um, well, let's try something else, something that, that I felt really didn't work. Here are my choices of colors. As I said, very few colors to choose from, but quite a variety of values. So if you're not going to match, but you want to find a good value, uh, go ahead and do it. So let's try, um, I'm not going to try yellow because that's going to be even lighter than what I have in there now. And, you know, I can't, I'm a watercolorist. I can't go lighter. I did try gray. Let's see what that looks like picking a thick brush and starting to paint it in. All right, there it goes. There it is. And that didn't really get, really get me much further. That didn't really unite things for me. So I knew I didn't, although I thought about having a gray background, um, that, that quickly dissuaded me from doing it. I needed something that was a different value. I could, and so that made me think, well, maybe I'll try black. Uh, <laughs> I tried black, uh, and that really, that was a real eye opener because I didn't expect it. There we are back. I undid it. Now I'm going to pick black. And I thought that might really be the ticket. Go really, really dark. So I'm picking, I picked black. Now I'm going to pick the brush. I'm going to pick a thick brush. And now I'm going to go in and put it in. And you're going to see, I think, what I saw, which was, oh boy, that is too dark. So I tried a gray, which was um, 
just a little bit darker than the value gray I already have in. And then I tried a blue, blue or violet, which was darker. But then when I put in the black, oh, I really hated that. That just, that didn't work for me. So it allowed me to see that, um, not what color to use, but it allowed me to see what value to probably use. And then I did lean toward um, violets and magenta. And then um, I also, I didn't use it for this, but uh, the other option I had was, well, okay, um, if you're gonna do that to the background, what happens if you do something to the table? So I picked a color, I think I went into brown. Yeah, I went into brown. Again, picked the brush, made it thick. And then I made the table quite a bit browner. And let's see what that looks like. And I think you're gonna agree with me that that was not gonna work. So I'm painting it in with my fingers. So you don't need a tool, you know, and you don't need Adobe Photoshop and, you know, or something really sophisticated. This is really, really, it's, it's simple and simple and free. That was another one of my choices and I, I didn't like that at all. But you might come to a different conclusion. So anyway, Markup is an app that I think I'm going to use a lot when I have a painting that I feel like I've come pretty close to uh, success, pretty close to where I want it to be, but I'm not quite there. I think this is going to help me find the value. Now, if I had more patience and was more technically savvy, I'd probably go into Adobe Photoshop or something like that. And then I could really dial in exactly the color that I probably wanted to mix. But um, <laughs> I don't have the time. No, that's not true. I don't have the time. I don't have the patience. And um, so I'm going to try this first. Um, I am a strategic painter, but I don't know that I want um, everything planned from the very, very beginning. I, I want to be open to uh, making some decisions along the way that I didn't know that I would ever make. So now we're going to go back to the video and I'm going to show you how that little exercise in using the app markup let me finish the painting. So I'll insert that now. All right, so now we're going to zoom through the painting. You saw how I made the decision that I wanted to make. I mixed up a violet, which was um, ultramarine blue, a little bit of indigo, and some permanent rose. Now, these are colors I've already used in the painting. I didn't um, want to bring something in that I hadn't used yet. I, I could have, but, but I didn't want to. Uh, the brush is uh, an inch wide at the bottom. It's a flat brush. And this is called cutting in. I think that's what uh, watercolorists call it, when you're cutting in around something that you've already painted. And that felt pretty good to me about here. I know it looks a little bit drippy. I'm going to come back and fix that. There's the original picture underneath, which you can see the background. Um, it, this was artistic license. I needed to change it because it did not look unified. Um, those are puzzle pieces in the foreground. I didn't want to get involved in painting every piece. I wanted to look at overall value and shape. And what I'm doing here is just um, pumping up the color a little bit with cerulean blue. And um, there's some permanent rose in there. Um, not Probably not changing value very much, but just, like I said, increasing the brightness of the color, not necessarily how light or dark the color is. I felt like the menorah was not really present. It was looking a little ghostly. And I know in the picture it's a silver um, menorah, but again, I felt that, uh, that I wanted to change that and make it a gold one. And, um, you know, if you didn't see the photograph next to it, you would never know the difference. So those are just decisions that you make along the way, just based on design. And I, you know, I had a bunch of different elements. I mean, in the end, this painting is a painting of just a bunch of stuff thrown on the, thrown, well, accumulated on the table. It was not carefully planned out, but it caught my eye and I thought, oh, that's, that's something I want to do. Um, but since I don't have a gold menorah, uh, I decided, uh, you know, as an artist, I can make it a gold menorah. And I, I needed that as a unifying element to um, to the table and some of the other yellows that were happening in the painting, which I'm doing now. I, I, it was really important to me not to make the table overall brown uh, because that was going to end up being the same value as the background. It would take away the idea that the background was darker. Um, so I just put in a few key areas where I would use that um, quinacridone sienna and a little bit of yellow. Trying to keep brightness up here. Trying to keep brightness up as much as I can because that's what caught my eye. I mean, sometimes you have to know the reason why you're painting something. And the idea of painting something was, yeah, the Christmas mashup, 
mashup or holiday mashup appealed to me. But the other thing that appealed to me was it's dark outside and I want to find color anywhere I can. Now this is the thing that most watercolors do when they're doing um, a background or a sky. You turn your piece up, uh, upside down. And this piece is um, 14 inches uh, on the bottom and I think 20 inches or 24 inches on the side. So it's a, it's a pretty big piece of paper. It's on a arch block, but it's a pretty big piece of paper. If you're going to let things drip down to the bottom, don't forget to take a paper towel and just swipe at the bottom and make sure that you don't leave the drips there. If you do, you have that thing that happens where you get a what the you know blowback. You'll end up with um, a weird looking um, some weird looking bubbles at the bottom. So it's just a, a, an old trick to remember to wipe the bottom. But that's how I got that second coat in, turning it upside down and that got rid of some of the blotchiness. Now I'm not sure if I want to go back and do another coat of it or not. I don't think I do. I think that I'm going to live with this for a while. I think I'm pretty happy with this for right now. But I want you to see how I use the app in order to figure out how to finish this painting. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel and if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing it and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.